So we're here at the we're here at the burn now. A um, couple of horses that got castrated. I got to jog today because they obviously they get swollen a little bit. You don't want to leave them in, so uh, we'll jog them a little bit today. Maybe uh, I might go a three point blue chip. Can't wait to see what he looks like. Um, and put the harness on a couple of the horses that had that got here a little bit late. Before I do that, I'm going to finish a couple of lists. First one on the list again. This is the second part of the yearlings. Uh, at 31 minutes, my phone just stops and I got to start back over. So, um, rows above it. This is the, out of the, the horse, out of the sister, the Cantab, out of the sister to Muscle Massive. Um, just a really good looking colt. Uh, I know that they were going, they were thinking of castrating that colt just because he was jumping around and he had bit at somebody and, you know, you just don't want to see that stuff in the berm. I can't have that stuff in the berm when we have clients coming in and out of here. A horse are going to bite or kick. Can't have that. I, even even um, Braymar last year, who would bite the uh, at the odd person, he knew better. You know, when people are around, he wouldn't just grab the odd person once in a while. If the caretaker was taking too long or being a goof around him, he'd bite at him. But uh, he was never dirty in the sense that he would just grab somebody. So you can't have that in this. Not in this barn. Not my barn. So... Um, rows above it uh, and the other thing is I don't want to wait until they get worse right give them a couple of weeks see if they'll get over it once they settle into the burn if they can't get over it and they're still going to have that little that little biting tendency then you got to cut them uh, any of those bad habits that if they can't di if they dissipate if they start to uh, get worse in any way then then uh, they really need to be cut and that's exactly what took place with a number of horses but that's no problem at all we some of our best horses were castrated at this time of the year so um, Rose above it. I can't say that he was. I know he was originally on the list, but I know after Harlan kicked someone, he got elevated. Uh, he got elevated to number one um, on the most wanted list. So I don't know if they got to Rose above it yet, but he'll be soon, if not already done. Rosie's masterpiece. Beautiful filly. This is a nice filly, the full sister to Riveting Rosie. Um, a filly that. Uh, you guys know the backstory. I'll, I'll tell it again. Uh, you know, I don't mean to be redundant, but at the same time, um, Rosie's masterpiece's brother, uh, Rosie's War Bonds, was a colt that we were the underbidder on last year at 100000 So we had the $95,000 bid on her full brother. He didn't turn out that well this year. He raced. It was a grassroots horse, but he didn't turn out that well. This is the full sister now. Rosie's War Bonds was a gelding, uh, a stud. Um, Rosie's riveting Rosie was obviously a filly. Uh, there was one, at least one more in the middle that I think one got injured and got bred. Uh, and then the, now you have Rosie's Masterpiece. So Rosie's Masterpiece, I, I can't speak about Rosie's R Riveting Rosie or Rosie's War Bonds or any of those other horses. All I can tell you is this filly does her work really, really well. So that's what's important to me, especially right now at step one, is that Rosie's Masterpiece understands her work, trots well, trots clean, doesn't appear to have any issues. For that, she's an A plus right now. And also shocking, I believe she still has 20 shares left. That will be fixed by Monday afternoon. If you're out there saying, oh, I'm going to wait, I might buy a share of Riveting Rosie's sister or I might buy a share of Rosie's masterpiece, um, I'd get on that because in the next 24 to 48 hours that will be rectified and it'll be zero. Slim Jimmy. Uh, this is a horse, I really would like to uh, dust the shares up on this horse. He's a beautiful horse, he does everything right. Um, just a nice horse kind of flew under the radar because we didn't make a big uh, we didn't make a lot of noise about him at the Ohio sale it's kind of in a rear view mirror now so I suspect you'll get a little refresher course when you see him under the drone on Wednesday and at that point we'll have a few more discussions about selling out Slim Jimmy but for now take your time watch him go uh, I believe it's gonna be on Wednesday so watch him go this week spent is spend that money's brother big giant swan for all colt he was sold out the second the hammer dropped so there was no issues with him i really thought this colt would bring 35 40 thousand and he brought 11 you can never really tell at a sale you might hear me say that and say anthony you just don't know what you're talking about then well there's lots of horses that go higher and lower and the only difference between um uh three point blue chip the only difference between 115 and 315 is two people that want him more than more than each other, right? That didn't happen with that colt. You know, they stepped away and said, ah, maybe I like one later on. Maybe, you know, I already got one that's in the same jurisdiction. Um, and we were minus, you know, Blue Chip Farms was minus a couple of heavy hitters and major bidders on three-point Blue Chip. And that is the only reason we got him for 115 and that he didn't bring the 300 that everybody, including I, 
thought he would bring. And in this case, with uh, Spent, uh, this is a Colt right before the sale. You know, and the only thing I didn't know was how the Swan Frawls would sell. I just thought, historically speaking, and looking at the Indiana sale, you couldn't have bought Spent for 11000 You might not have been able to buy Spent for 40000 in Indiana. But it's all about timing in this game, whether it be racing horses, buying horses, or training horses. It's all about timing, right? And uh, for whatever reason, that day, that night, that time frame, that exact moment, Spent a horse that I was sure would bring thirty or forty. We got him for 11. So I guess I wasn't the only one. Irv Miller and his client come up and bought half of them uh, before I had finished my drink. So um, they too understood that there was a, a wide berth between what we paid and what he should have went for, at least on the surface. Uh, Stonebridge Dolce, another horse that has not hit the market yet. She will at some, some point. This is a very well-bred filly by a uh, very well-bred filly. I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm just going to look at it here, see if I can open this without there being Wi-Fi. Apparently there's popcorn in here. Uh, let me see, just give me one second here. My sales, uh, Lexington Select, open, yes, top list five, here we are. Uh, Stonebridge Dolce. So, all oh, this is the same family as I said I liked on the other horse. This is a third full from a Donato Hanover mare. The second dam is a dam of Creamy Mimi, French Laundry, all those good horses. Third dam is a dam of Pizza Dolce. You, you, can't, you can't fault this family. I mean, you can say, yeah, the first dam's weak. Fine. We'll see about that. I don't know what took place with the other two. Did one of them die? Did they get sick? Were they lame? Were they, in, you know, were they not correct? These are things that I can't, or maybe the horses were just no good. Maybe she's no good. But I can tell you one thing. She trots some kind of nice on the track and is a very, very good looking filly. So Stonebridge Dolce is a horse that I'm keeping my eye up. Anthony Windsor shares going up. I told you, I'll start listing some of these shares after we start cleaning up the ones that we have. It's only fair, um, you know, for us. I can't be left hand holding the bag this year. As I said, this is a different year. And uh, I got to be honest, uh, the, the, the outpouring of support, um, you know, both mentally and financially from our clients has been extraordinary. And I truly appreciate it. As I said, this filly will go up for sale. Actually, I might. what I might do is build a couple of groups to clean up a lot of the shares and put some of the Stonebridge Dolce shares in those groups because you otherwise would not be able to get them. That's a possibility also. So Stonebridge Dolce does everything right. So far, so good with her. Stonebridge he Hecati, I think that's how you say it. Stonebridge Hecati is uh, Stonebridge Simba's brother by Cadabra. Pretty hard not to go wrong, or pretty hard to go wrong there. I believe his sister sold for 120,000 two years ago. Uh, another Ontario bred. I don't want to say uh, it was a muscle mass, but I think it was. Actually, what's wrong with me? I can tell right now what it was. Top list five. Um, where is our boy at here? Stonebridge Hikati. Where you at? There he is. Stonebridge Hikati. The one I'm thinking of was Sheer Energy, who is a muscle mass. Yeah. She made $74,000, went in 58 as a two year old, and was 120000 I think, or 130000 as a yearling. This is the Cadabra brother. Again, not much more to say in there. Stonebridge Simba's done well for us. Uh, has his moments. Won his last start. And this is his little bro, his little brother, Stonebridge Hikati. Sweet on Pete. Uh, what can we say about Sweet on Pete? I like that I have this thing right here. I can just look at it whenever I want. Uh, my sales. Ohio Jug Select Sale. Open. Uh, Sweet on Pete is number 13. I remember that. And there she is. Sweet on Pete is out of Oh, so ba oh, so, uh, oh Sweet Baby. That's been by Ergeron's Philly. Made $650,000. Has thrown uh, three foals. Final Dream, Lima on Lima Oh So Sweet. And one that is not listed. So two out of three took marks at uh, one at two, one at three. The other horse isn't shown yet. This is a very, very strong family and a very, very strong filly. This filly is a giant. And I, I forgot about her for about a week and then uh, she's in Jason's barn also right now, and he mentioned to me, he said, my God, what a beautiful filly the, the Pete filly is. I said, which Pete filly? We have like three or four Uncle Peters. 
He said, the, the big giant one that you bought early in the sale in Ohio. I said, oh, right away, I knew. Number 13, Sweet on Pete. Beautiful filly. Then we have Three Point Blue Chip. Now, let's talk for a minute about Three Point Blue Chip. It's your time. Uh, three Point Blue Chip. So, you guys know, for a very, very long time, uh, for three, four years, we've looked at and tried to purchase very, uh, we always had a group of people that wanted to buy what they considered to be a horse that would obviously cost a little bit more money, but had stronger pedigree, stronger confirmation, um, let's just say a little more meat on the bones, so to speak. Now you can never tell, nobody knows what's going to happen in July, but that starting point, the better the confirmation, the better the breeding, the better the horse looks, what jurisdiction, what sire, these are all things as you check those boxes off, the price goes up and up and up and up and up. Now when I looked at Three Point Blue Chip, I don't have to go back, but I will. When I look at Three Point Blue Chip, I see a horse that should not be in our barn, right? Here is a horse. Dunk the Donato is the mother. Four foals. Now, the update on Splash Blue Chip. Let's go to the update on Plunge Blue Chip. 22 wins, multiple world champion, $1.4 million made, a mark of 49 and 4 as a trotter. 49 and 4, timed in 49 and 1. My God almighty. Now, Splash Blue Chip, now timed in 53 and 4 as a two year old. Second in the International Stallion Trot, $93,000 made. Second in the New York Sires, second in the other New York Sires. So plunge, sp uh, Splash Blue Chip updated earnings from 46 on the catalog to 93, uh, timed in 153 and 4, and has a two year old mark of 58 and 3. So the two year old is good. Uh, the aged mare is incredible. Pl uh, plunge Blue Chip. Now you can only imagine the amount of money and interest in this horse. When I looked at the catalog, there was a list of five or six horses that I knew would go for a lot of money. But I was gonna say little, because I didn't want to get everybody's hopes up. What about this one? What about that one? What about this one? I looked at the x-rays, because Blue Chip Farms had the x-rays available. So that was done. Didn't tell anyone, didn't even tell my wife. Because it wasn't that I was trying to be sneaky. It was almost, I didn't want to get anybody's hopes up and look foolish in the sense that I'm think, saying to you, hey, I think we can buy uh, Plunge Blue Chips, Splash Blue Chips, brother, by Walner. You saw the prices for Walner and Lexington. We really shouldn't have been able to afford this horse. I look at this horse, well north of a quarter of a million dollars. That's what I'm thinking right away. Just money signs. You can't afford this horse. But it's a sale. And as I said to you, the difference between 115 and 315 or even more, it's just two people that want it more than the other. That's it. Nothing more. So I sat there in the back tent, and I, and I told this story, but I, I like telling it. It's cool. Um, I snuck away from the group of people we had. We had uh, Social Steve. We had <laughs> we had Mark Treffy, Michelle Treffy, Sherry Collison was there. Um, a number of other clients had dropped by. Dave Bolas and his wife were there. Um... But we were looking at horses, and I knew this horse was about to win the ring. So this was a makeshift sale. There was tents, one that fell down, uh, tents in the center field, uh, uh, it, and it was a thoroughbred track, a fair track of some sort. So there was barn areas there full of these uh, horses at the sale. It was a sprawling, like you would have to take an Uber from Winback's tent over to Blue Chip's barn. Like it was a, or over to Preferred, the end shed row Preferred. It was a long way. So... Every barn had a TV with the sail on. And as I saw 91 coming up, I said, I'll be right back. Where are you going? I said, I'm just going up to the tent for a minute. And I didn't know they were on their way up. I didn't know they were close. The bidding starts. I, I'd said this before, but it, it was neat. I'll remember this for a long time. Uh, hopefully in a good in a good light. Um, the bidding starts. Um, 20, 30, 40. I bid 50, right? 50. And immediately, it just went 60, 70, 80, 90. I'm like, he's going to go for 400, right? I've already seen a horse go for 400. He's going to go for 400. 90, 95. And as soon as I heard 95, I'm like, how'd you go from 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90 to 95? You're already down to $5,000 bids? 95, 100, 105. That's weird. 110, 110, 110. 
I bid 115. So as I had the $115,000 bid, I should have taken a picture of the board as it happened. Because now two things are happening. Now I believe I can buy this horse that I didn't think I had any shot of buying. And now it's also sinking in that that's 115,000 US dollars. And I haven't told a human being I was bidding on him, not one. So at that point, it's, you know, the reality of what's about to take place is setting in. So Mark Treffy and, and everybody come around the corner. He sits down and he goes, what's next? I said, just one second. He looks up and he sees 115. He looks at the horse. He says, yeah, 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 okay. He said, you're bidding on that horse? And just as he said it, boom, a hammer goes down. I said, not anymore. And he thought I was joking. He's like, yeah, okay. Then they bring the ticket over and obviously everybody's excited and happy that we got such a, a well-bred horse. I think at that point my mom might have been about that big. <laughs> so like, I know we have uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients that would love to have this horse. Not to mention, uh, Tom has been a, a huge uh, helper of the stable in various ways. We haven't had any luck with blue chip horses, but it's not that he hasn't tried. It's not that I haven't tried. To get this horse, which would be, for the most part, the cornerstone of the of the... Although Blue Chip sold horses for more expensive than this horse, he shouldn't have. So I texted Tom right away. I said, hey, I just bought that horse. And he sent me back. He goes, I, I don't understand how that horse doesn't bring 300000 Now, as a breeder talking to me, the guy that just bought his horse, you know, you're going to want to pump my tires up. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. He goes, honestly, he said, I know you think I'm just saying this, which I did. Uh, but he said, all the right people looked at this horse. I just, I just assumed... He would be, be one of the top horses in the sale. So I take it for what it is. I go home that afternoon. I'm, I'm excited because earlier, we'll talk about the other filly, earlier in the sale, I was so, so excited about the first purchase we made. This was not the first purchase. And and not the best purchase by far. You know, he was the, he was our centerpiece, but take nothing away from the one I bought earlier. We'll talk about her in a minute. But Three Point Blue Chip, uh, I went home, I get up the next day, I was greeted in the lobby by a fairly prolific owner in the industry who offered me uh, a profit on the horse. I thought about it, first thing that, that came to my mind, me being a guy running a giant stable was, yeah, you know, this is like 10 grand Canadian. I was like, yeah, and then I'm like, in my head, and I'm like, hold on, you waited four years to buy a horse with this pedigree. You got him for a lot less than you thought he would bring. The fact that you got him at all is shocking. The fact that you got him for this price is surprising. And that's only reinforced by the fact that this gentleman waited in the lobby to ask me if I would sell him. Now I get to the train now I get to the sale of the pavilion. Tom's there, Grossman. So I call him aside and I said, You know, what do you think? I said, you know, part of me wants to sell, but I, I don't really want to. I said, and I know what I thought. You know, my good fortune buying him for this price shouldn't turn into somebody else's great fortune. And and not for that amount of money. It should be an amount of money where immediately it's like, geez, I can't turn that down. And truthfully speaking, the stable.ca purchasing three point blue chip is worth a lot of money. Right? Us get having this horse brings us to another level in some aspects, right? We aren't just the guys buying, you know, value based horses all the time we are and I'm proud to do that but we're still looked down upon by some people because we don't you know we don't have those brand name horses this was it this was the one one of them anyway so Tom said the same thing he said why turn somebody else's why turn your very good day into somebody else's better day he said if they're going to force you to sell the horse and give you and offer you an astronomical amount of money then go ahead he said but and, and to be quite frank Tom Grossman was staying in for 10%. And I didn't ask him. Keep in mind, it's not like I floated this idea to Blue Chip Farms or anyone else. My wife didn't know I was bidding on this horse. So when I talked to Tom, he said he'd stay in for 10% if, he, if, if we needed him to. If we sell him, we don't need him to. So what's it matter to him if I say, if he? why wouldn't he just say, yeah, sell the horse? Now he's not on the hook, he gets money. I make money, everyone's happy. Because not the right thing to do. What, what we what we accomplished in purchasing Three Point Blue Chip, at least right now, might be a giant flop next July. Who knows? 
But what we accomplished by buying this horse, it's worth more than, than the profit I was offered. So I, I had spoke to the gentleman and I said, I just, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think so. I said, I, I appreciate you asking and, and, and I, I'm flattered, but at the same time, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to decline. So that's what we did with three point blue chip. And that's how excited I am about getting this horse. Not just because this is plunge blue chips, brother, not just because this is a great, great family, not just because he's a beautiful animal, but because of what he says and what he represents for the stable.ca. I've always said, we don't need to spend a lot of money to get a good horse. And I believe that look at what we've done. But at the same time, People in this industry don't really take us as serious. You know, they're interested, they're intrigued, they think what we're doing is really neat and cool and probably really important for the industry. But do they take us seriously? Maybe not. This might be step one. Might be. So, I am, uh, it was scary, obviously, to bid on the horse, but at the same time, if I didn't, what's that say about me? We're here to find value. How else can you find, and where can you find more value than that? If I'm telling you that I thought he was 250 north of 250 easy, let's not say 300. Let's say north of 350. We got him at 40%, 60% off for one of the best pedigrees in the entire sale. It's a pretty easy purchase. Three point blue chip is ours, and I couldn't be happier. So, next, tie one on. This is a sister to uh, Tipsy and Dixie. She's done great for us. I had her price right around where she went for. Did we get a 60% off on her? No, maybe 10. But at the same time, uh, very, very happy to have this filly. She does everything beautifully on the track. Bar hopping. We got our bar hopping for the year. Uh, Tioga Sunshine, again, I was very excited and happy and lucky to have Jeff Gorell work with us. You guys may not know this or not, but Mr. Gorell has retained 25% ownership in every horse we bought from his consignment. That says a lot about the stable and the fact that people believe we're trying to do things the right way, right? We're trying to bring people in. We're trying to grow something. Not only are we trying, but we have in the face of everybody in this industry telling us we couldn't do it, telling us we couldn't succeed, we did. And the fact that farms and people are willing to stay involved with us says a lot. And I, I truly appreciate the offer uh, from, from Jeff Gorell and, and uh, happy to have him. So Tioga Sunshine, your partner on Tioga Sunshine is Jeff Gorell. Uh, Twinby Habanero. We had a number of New York prospects. I told you after day two, I was done. And I was done, kind of. Um, I was done when it came to, um, when it came to, um, oh, I did forget one horse. I knew I forgot one. Harvard Yard. We'll skip back to her after. Um, when it came to, um, our New York horse, we had a number. I love 605, Hayesville. That was the brother to So Admirable. Uh, I looked at a role with Joe Colt that Blake McIntosh ended up getting, and we were happy to, uh, the client that really wanted that horse, that particular horse, um, I could have run Blake up and made Joe Thompson another $20,000 maybe. But at the same time, I knew it was Blake bidding. Our client wanted the horse. Why not let our client join Blake McIntosh's stable and, and get that horse for 15 rather than 30 or 35, which I would have pushed him to. So that's what we did. I let the roll with Joe go for 15. Brian Zweig is now with Blake. And and um, good for Blake, good for Brian. I hope the horse wins the medal in space for <laughs> the North American Cup. Um, but for me, again, we were looking for value, what I wanted. I had my eye on that Huntsville Colt so bad. But before him, 30 hips before him or so, was a colt that was just so gorgeous. I just, I was certain we couldn't afford him. So surreal, so, so, sold so strong over the last two years. And this was such a good looking horse. Maybe because he was so big, people maybe laid off of him. Don't joke, don't kid yourself. This is a gorgeous colt. This is a so surreal colt. I'm just gonna pull him up. This is a so surreal colt, uh, who is a half brother to Twinbee Sunkissed. Twinbee Sunkissed, I could see what happened here. Now on the catalog, Twin B Sunkist was a Sunshine Beach with a before time with a qualifying mark of 56, timed in 53 and 1, but doesn't show a whole lot. Click on the tab right here that says updates, and you see Twin B Sunkist now has a two-year-old mark on a half mile track, Grand River, which that half mile track, that mark was taken in a gold event. 
Um, Twin B Sunkissed won a gold in 154 and 3, timed in 52 and 2 as she was second in a Grand Circuit event at Mohawk, with earnings now cataloged earnings of $95,450. That may have been missed by a lot of people, not me. Robert's Rage was in the second dam. Real Artist, the stud, was in the third dam. Just a very, very, very good, strong pedigree, top to bottom. Then when you factor in how he looked, I went to the farm and saw this horse at his home the farm in the summer at Twinbee Farms and he was a knockout. I just didn't think we could afford him, but I waited. I thought we could afford the Huntsville. I thought he would bring 22, 23,000. That's what he brought. I wasn't sure what Twinbee Habanero would bring. So his bidding stalled at 25. I thought this horse was probably 35 or 40 would be a purchasable animal for us, meaning that was what I thought face value was. 35 I would consider like a Taiwan on purchase. Yeah, I said 37, went for 35, good for me. Still a good purchase. I'm still rounding down. 27? That's a discount. And Twin B Habanero was a horse I was so excited to get for 27, I just never thought we would be able to. Again, you can hear me ramble on and say, yeah, whatever, Anthony. Just watch them on the drone. Uh, next is Twinkle in Her Eye. I don't have to tell you guys about Twinkle in Her Eye, for the love of God. I just want to make sure I have it correct. Twinkle in Her Eye was right here. Where are you at, Twinkle? Twinkle in Her Eye, hip number 401 at Lexington. So this filly has a full sister, a full sister, with 16 wins, a mark of 51 and 3, timed in 50 and 1, $354,000 made. Full sister. You might say, well, yeah, you know, they had five foals, five winners, 100% producing dam. Twinkle was the full sister. Ashley Sparkles was an art major who took a mark of 53. Royal Ashton was a royal majesty, had a mark of 55. Ashley's Quick was a quick pulse Mindale, had a mark of 54 and 3. And Ashley Sport was a sports writer, had a two, all these horses for the most part had two-year-old marks, two-year-old mark of 56 and 2. Those are all five. So you had a better's delight. An art major, um, a royal majesty, a quick pulse Mindale, and a sports writer. This is the better's delight. This is the full sister of the richest and fastest one in the whole in the whole family. Second dam, you might say, okay, okay, okay. Second dam, just better than Cheddar and Courtly Choice. Two world champions, uh, two world champions, two uh, studs are in the second dam. You're not getting any better breeding than this horse. I don't care. So, um, as I said. Pretty simple purchase for us. I thought this filly didn't know how the Better's Delights would sell. Looking back and how incredibly expensive they were, this filly probably should have been 60 70 We ended up with her for $32,000. Nuff said, pretty easy purchase in that regard. Now, we bought two Walners this year. Two of them. The first one, uh, where are you at? Where are you at, big boy? The first one is uh, Unbeatable Kemp. Unbeatable Kemp was a strong, well-bred colt. I was very, very surprised. Now, older blood, I guess you could argue. Armbro Fling, world champion, was in the third dam, right? 28 wins, uh, $1.3 million made. Now, she was the Dan Patch three-year-old filly of the year in 1987. I was 11, just so you know. Uh, but the second dam, Armbro Token, that was a nice horse. Mario raced all the time. Jeez, he was a nice horse. Market 55 and one a quarter of a million dollars made. And then the Cadabra brother was racing. <clears throat> the Cadabra brother is racing also vodka soda. Unbeatable Kemp. Just a nice horse. I thought looking at the Walners, he would have went for a lot more. I probably would have paid happily 25, 27,000 for this horse. And he brought $17,000. What's that? Open. Okay, I'll do them. I'll do them. We're almost done now anyway. So that was Unbeatable Kemp. Unbeatable Kemp, $17,000. Pretty hard to go wrong for a Walner. Just look back. Look back at the Walner prices, right? Just look back at them. Look at the breeding of this horse. Look at his video and then tell me, I underpaid or overpaid for the horse. I think we did a fantastic job this sale season and this horse was on the list of reasons why. What's up? You gotta believe, I wanna get this right about this horse. Just give me a second here. You gotta believe was in Ohio. Let's open up Ohio. I'm gonna go to 
I don't know what number he was. So we're going to go to Sire, Uncle Peter, you're there, search, you got to believe it's way down here, right here, where you at? I thought he was sold way after this, I don't see him yet, that's weird. Uh, Aunt Rita, Magical Rainbow, what's up Cupcake? Aunt Nelly. Oh, because we changed his name. That's right. Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye was his name. Right? Spring Haven? Yes, it is. Uh, we changed his name. So You Gotta Believe used to be called Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. Okay, now I'm on track. It, this is a... Uh, how many foals have you had, dear? Mm, two previous foals. This is an Andover Hall mare. The Mayfield horse had raced a two as a Dejarmbro. The second was a Triumphant Caviar Philly. This is an Uncle Peter. So I would say a huge jump up in breeding. The second dam, I wanted wings. $394,000 made by Muscles Yankee. And then the third dam, Mr. Goal again. $231,000. Lots of money, lots of speed. I don't know these horses for the most part. But this was more of a horse that was affordable. He was bought for the McMaster charity that we were uh, donating to that Matt Millen had set up. We had Rick Five and Doug Gilmore and Shane Corson, a number of people involved in this horse, um, and we're really interested on the track. I saw him trot on the track the other day. The day I left, the day before I left for Timonium, I saw this horse on the track. All he does is trot. He is perfectly flawless. If he has any faults, is he's a little small, but we had lots of nice small horses this year. Don't forget, my jazz was a midget. So was I'm a lovely lady. So I'm certainly not worried about uh, you gotta believe. Uh, now, Voyage of Ice and Fire. This is a horse you guys should really... Well, you will. You will. You will. Uh, pay attention to. So we're going to click on Long Tom here. We're going to go to Voyage of Ice and Fire. There it is. Up, Tom. Uh, where are you at, Voyage? Voyage, Voyage, Voyage. Where is this horse at? Oh, that's why. Because he's not by Long Tom. What the hell is wrong with me? He's by Break the Bank K. <laughs> losing my mind break the bank a search there's my boy right there voyage of ice and fire now as i said to you guys the other day voyage of ice and fire might be one of the better bred not the best by far now but he might be one of the better bred horses we have this horse has a credit winner brother took a mark at 58 at 2 52 and 3 at 3 52 and 2 at 4 timed in 52 flat made six hundred eighty thousand dollars, thirty-four 34 wins by credit winner fashion creditor was his name the second dam, Coco Lindy by Cantab Hall. This horse had 52 lifetime wins. 52 lifetime wins. 56 and 1 as a 2 year old. 54 and 3 as a 3 year old. 52 and 2. Timed in 52 and 1. 52 wins Coco Lindy. And then in the third dam, another miracle. I remember race, watching this horse race when I was a kid. My God Almighty. 906,000 made. A mark at 2. Again, all these have 2 year old lifetime marks. It's very important. Two-year-old mark at 58 and four, then timed in 57 and one. Just in a, an incredible uh, horse in his own right. Another miracle. I believe the Swedes had him, if I'm not not mistaken. But again, Voyage of Ice and Fire, really underestimated as far as what he looks like on the track, what he's bred like. Again, you guys are going to see this guy, and you'll make your own decision. But I already know. I, I don't have to worry about you making any decisions about him. Just a good-looking horse. Voyage of Ice and Fire. We get two more left. Two horses that were very, very interesting in two different ways. The first one. The first one. Will to win Hanover. Now, this was my first purchase of the Timonium sale. The first purchase. Day one Philly. Full sister to Crystal Fashion. Crystal Fashion made $1.8 million. By Cantab, full sister. Uh, $1.8 million. A lifetime mark of one fifty flat as a trotter. Timed in 49 and 3, was the favorite in the Hamiltonian when we were there that year. Raced against him all year with Lawmaker. I beat him once with Lawmaker. I cheated a little bit. It was a two year old race and I backed the half up big. And Crystal Fashion got up the inside and I beat him a nose. Um, second dam is Far Far Farmer Jones, who also was a world champion. You really can't buy this horse for what we bought her for. And I was so excited. I'll tell you another quick little story. I told you guys this before, but um, across the street, from where we stayed at Timonium was a steakhouse called Stony Stony River, Stony Creek, something like that. So I go in the first night, and I'm there on Sunday. So two days for the sale, no one's there. 
sitting at the bar by myself, looking at the iPad, you know, having something to eat, having a drink, and watching yearling videos. And the girl said, I see a number of people here with looking, you know, that are, that are horse people. I said, there's a sale this year at, at Timonium down the street. And she goes, oh. So, you know, she asked me about, you know, what we're doing, whatever. So anyway, I eat. Uh, Monday, we go look at all the horses. Tuesday, first horse I buy, will to win Hanover. Now, again, she went 10, 20, 30, 35. And I'm thinking this filly brings, I don't know how much. I've seen her five times. I have no idea what she's going to bring. 35, 35, 35. I'm sitting there. 35, what are you talking about? 35. Guy looks at me, he goes, you want in? I said, I get no shame. I said, 37. 37. 37 in the back. 37. Bang. What? I said, 37,000. So, get the ticket. I already looked at her. I don't even have to go back and look at her other than take pictures. I know she's a good-looking filly. So that night, we go back to the steakhouse. So Sunday, the steakhouse. Monday, I didn't. Sunday, our Tuesday, sorry, Mark Treffy and everybody's in town. We're going to the steakhouse. We walk in for a reservation at, at whatever, 730. And at the bar is Jim Campbell by himself looking at videos. Same thing I did two days before. So I said, I walk up to him. I said, geez, I thought I was the only guy that came to this place by himself and looked at videos. And he goes, he goes, that's horse racing for you. He said, uh, so this is now, this is after day one. He said, geez, you made a couple of real good buys today. And I said, ah, we'll see you next summer. And he goes, you know, that filly, she's a really, really good looking filly. Um, you know, he, he, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to paraphrase. I'll just say the gist of it was he liked the filly a lot. He, he, usually the, the fashion firms, Jules Siegel, who he works with, doesn't buy siblings. They bought the brother to Crystal Fashion. He was a dud. This is the sister. He said, I would have loved to buy her, but, you know, everything going on, you know, with buying the brother that was a dud. And it, it sounded to me like uh, Mr. Siegel didn't really like to buy siblings of good horses. Uh, it wasn't a, a precursor or a good indicator of, of, a, of a horse, which is fair. But I don't have anything to do with Crystal Fashion. I was looking for a good filly. This was a strong family. If you extract Crystal Fashion from that family, you still have a strong family. This was a beautiful filly, well put together, with a world champion brother. Those horses don't bring $37,000. It just doesn't happen. So he said, no. He said, I really liked her. I looked at her. But it's just, you know, it was, it was a good buy. So I was excited. And then our last horse, World for Two. I've talked to you guys again and again and again and again and again about World for Two, how much I liked him. I had no interest in buying... Um, buying a rock and roll dance but just that horse as an individual just caught my eye and I just liked him too much so we bought World for Two another horse I'm not going to stoke the flames or pump the tires of World for Two he'll do it for you he'll do it for you when you see him on the drone we will talk at that point about World for Two as you see him trained down this is a horse with an extraordinary strong family beautiful beautiful strong colt I just couldn't couldn't say enough about him but I'm going to let him say it for himself so the drone will be here this week. I promise the drone will be here this week. And we'll get them all drone for you. We have 48 horses. And we also have the Andover Hall filly. We'll talk more about her. The, that's the horse in Tim's care. Harvard Yard. Beautiful Andover, Andover Hall filly. Three families of strength. And uh, he's looking for partners on her. So we've partnered with him right now for 50%. I'm looking to... If you're in Pennsylvania, you want to do some business with Tim. Tim's a great guy and a great horseman. Um... We are going to be offering shares of Harvard Yard also, but she will not be with us. She will not be under the drone. Tim will give you regular updates and some videos of her, but she will be training down in Washington, Pennsylvania. So that's all the yearlings. My God, that was over an hour. I will talk to you guys soon. We've still got all the stables, all the two-year-olds, three-year-olds to talk about. I'll be back in just a minute.